Sounds. An internationally renowned brand since 1946, the French fashion house, acclaimed for its elegance and timeless femininity. A leading company that has remained at the top of fashion's hierarchy for over 70 years deals unique look has influenced the world of fashion since the beginning. Innovative but traditional, Dior maintains its reputation as creator of recognized haute couture. From their ready-to-wear fashion leather goods accessories or footwear, Dior changed the game forever. To this day, the brand is all around us in some way, shape, or form, even if we don't know it. Founded by Christian Dior in January 1905, the fashion house was established in December 1946 at 30 Avenue Montaigne in Paris. Dior's first collection launched on February 12 for spring-slash-summer 1947 at the company's headquarters. An instant success Harper's Bazaar editor-in-chief Carmel Snow strongly believed in Dior's talent. It's quite a revolution, dear Christian. Your dresses have such a new look, she exclaimed. Thus, the new look became a trademark. Introducing unique silhouettes consisting of shorter fuller skirts, tighter waists, and accentuated bust deals pieces were revolutionary, especially in the 40s. I wanted my dresses to be constructed, molded on the curves of the female body whose contours they would stylish. I accentuated the waist, the volume of the hips, and I emphasized the bust. In order to give my designs more hold, I had nearly all the fabrics lined with the curl of taffeta, renewing a tradition that had long been abandoned, said Christian Dior. The brand continued to flourish. By the mid-1950s the House of Dior was a highly respected fashion empire. Dior addressed countless celebrities including Marlene Dietrich, Ava Gardner and members of the royal family. Upon the tragic death of Christian Dior in 1957, 21-year-old Yves Saint Laurent took the creative reins of the acclaimed fashion house. Saint Laurent kept Christian Dior's legacy alive by using the same fabrics, keeping the proportions and silhouettes relatively similar. However, St. Laurent's collections featured pieces that were softer, lighter and easier to wear. St. Laurent's designs became more daring due to his success at the fashion house until 1960 when his Bohemian collection was harshly criticized. St. Laurent was called up to join the French army thus forcing him to leave Maison Dior, which raised no objection with the Dior management. Following the departure of Yves St. Laurent, Mark Bowen was appointed creative head in the late 1960s. Instilling a more conservative style he was credited as the man who kept the Dior label at the forefront of fashion while still producing wearable elegant clothes and women's wear daily claimed that Bowen rescued the firm. In 1967, Bowen's assistant Philippe Guiberge launched the brand's first French ready-to-wear collection called Miss Dior. In 1989 Italian-born Gianfranco Fair replaced Bowen as head designer. As the first non-French designer to take the creative reins at Dior, Fair left behind the traditional Dior aesthetic. With a reputation for feminine romantic silhouettes, Fair introduced a new style concept described as refined, sober and strict. As head of Haute Couture Haute Forpre Women's Ready-to-Wear Ready-to-Wear Furs and Women's Accessories Collections, Fair was awarded the Dédé. Commonly known as the Golden Dice, the Dédé was awarded twice a year in France to haute couture designers from 1976-1990. By 1990, Dior boutiques were opened in upscale New York City, Los Angeles, and Tokyo shopping districts. That year, Dior's revenue was $129,300,000 USD, with a net income of $22 million. By 1995, the label's revenue rose to $177 million USD with a net income of $26.9 million. Also in 1995, Bernadette Chirac, wife of former French President Jack Chirac, contacted Christian Dior, explaining that she wished to gift the Princess of Wales a unique handbag upon her visit to Paris. The Maison created a structured black bag, unofficially named the Chow Chu. It was presented to Lady Diana at the Cezanne exhibition at the Grand Palais. Shortly after the bag was seen on the arm of the princess during her visit to a children's home in Birmingham. She was photographed at day with bag, holding a child in her arms. A few weeks later, she was photographed again with her favorite bag during a state visit to Argentina. Described as iconic and legendary, Dior launched the bag in a larger series and changed the name to the Lady Dior in 1996 with Princess Diana's Blessing.
200,000 models were sold in two years thus deals leather goods turnover massively increased. The Lady Dior bag features padded cannage leather inspired by the Napoleon chairs Christian Dior once used to welcome clients on the day of his first show in 1947. With its structured silhouette and sturdy top handles, the Lady Dior also features the letters D, I, O, R on charm pedants as an eternal signature. Each Lady Dior is crafted by hand. Commencing with manual cutting out of the levers the pieces are then assembled and molded around a wooden form, finally it is meticulously sewn together. In total, there are 140 distinct pieces that are necessary in the process of creating a Lady Dior, hence the luxurious quality.